Hello and welcome to the Art Class Curator podcast. I am Cindy Ingram, your host and the founder of Art Class Curator and the Curated Connections Library. We're here to talk about teaching art with purpose and inspiration, from the daily delights of creativity to the messy mishaps that come with being a teacher. Whether you're driving home from school or cleaning up your classroom for the 15th time today, take a second, take a deep breath, relax those shoulders, and let's get started. Hello, and welcome back to the Art Class Curator Podcast. This is Cindy Ingram, and I hope you are enjoying our brand new format for the podcast, which is basically me clicking record and talking. (laughs) So today I want to share with you a little story. Uh, It's about when I was a student way back in, I don't know, 1994. When I was in middle school, it was the first time I took art. I've always loved art, but didn't really have it as an elementary student back then. And I was in a class, and I'm not going to name the teacher. I don't know if she's still a teacher or not. But that teacher in sixth grade and in seventh grade had the same teacher, had really zero control over her classroom. And I'm a rule follower. I have always been a rule follower. I was teacher's pet. I was always doing what I'm supposed to do. That is how I, how I always was as a student. And I loved art. I loved being a star student. And I'm in this class that is complete chaos. rule follower, but I also have always been very sensitive to the quality of teaching in a teacher. I think all students probably are, but so I'm in this situation where I love art. I want to make art. I want to do my work. I want to work hard, but probably, I don't even remember, but probably at least a fourth of the class was a bunch of like really rowdy boys. The teacher had zero control over the classroom. And so instead of, you know, figuring out a way to give consequences to that group of boys, it was full classroom punishment. We all had to spend days and days copying from the art dictionary, from the dictionary in the back of our textbooks. And for as an elementary student who didn't have art, coming into this classroom where I loved art, but I didn't get to do it. And I was being punished for something that, that wasn't work. So, you know, we're in a group, we are, I mean, it was just chaos. It really was. Fast forward to the next year, uh, seventh grade, still the same situation. Complete chaos. Teacher has no control over the classroom. And then I go into eighth grade. All of the exact same kids were in the eighth grade class. Like it was not this sort of brand new thing where all of a sudden it's all just the advanced kids in eighth grade. No, it was the same kids because those kids were actually really good at art. They just were not well behaved. In that class, everything was fine. The teacher knew how to keep control of the classroom. She knew how to have, you know, multiple differentiations in a project so that the kids who were more advanced and who really wanted to work hard got a little bit of an extra challenge. Uh, We learned about some artists, not a lot. It was still very studio focused, but, you know, it was a completely different experience. Same group of kids, uh, same school, completely different experience. The same thing happened when I, at my last teaching job, I went into a situation. It's a very, very small school and I taught everybody in sixth through ninth grade. And I would come into a class and they would be amazing. They would be so good. They would, we would have a good time. They would be learning. They would be interactive. And then I would hear from uh, different teachers on campus about how like those same students, how horrible they were, how horribly behaved they were. Not horrible. I don't think any student is horrible because they behave bad. So, you know, how can this be that the same students can be so different. And it really does rely so much on the teaching. I get a lot of the teaching in the classroom management, uh, more so than the classroom management. Um, I I get a lot of questions about classroom management um, in my inbox. And, you know, it's not necessarily my specialty. I felt like that was something I was good at most of the time. When I first started, I was decidedly not good at it. Um, but I, I figured out what worked for me, you know, through trial and error. But I really wanted to kind of step back and 
give you a little bit of encouragement to keep trying and keep experimenting and also some places that you can go to get help if there is some struggles in your life because there is nothing that will kill your day worse um, than having a few really hard classes. It's hard to get over that. It's hard to you know, take that energy and, and remove it from yourself. So I have some sort of self-care tips too that are, that are kind of related, but we're going to talk about the classroom management thing now, and I'm going to do a different episode about self-care. So I think the biggest thing I want to encourage you to, to remember is that this is completely normal, that every class every class is different and every teacher is different. So if you were to reach out and ask me, what do I do? I mean, I can give you some tips, but if I'm not actually in your classroom and knowing the exact specifics of what's going on in your students, it's really hard to give you good help. But there are people that do help uh, with classroom management. And I want to point you to Michael Linson. He did our podcast episode number two. And I love Michael's approach. His website is smartclassroommanagement.com. His approach comes from a place of really keeping the teacher happy. You know, he's written several books about classroom management, some spe- specifically for specials teachers. He also had a, has a book called Happy Teacher Habits, 11 Habits of the Happiest and Most Effective Teachers on Earth. And to me, your happiness as an art teacher, your um, overall energy during the day is something to be protected at all costs. That if you don't protect your own energy, it is very, very easy to be completely sucked away by this job. That it is is really hard job to be around all of that energy, all of those students all day long, all of those emotions and not let it affect you. So if you have a good classroom management system in place, if you have a good way to protect your energy and keep the joy in your classroom, that that is of utmost importance as a teacher for not only for longevity, you know, just to keep you sane through all this time, but also to keep you, to keep you happy. And if you're happy, if you're enjoying your job, if you have joy in your job day to day, like that is going to impact your students. They're going to get what they need. So uh, Michael Linson does do coaching for teachers. And so I think that is a really good option. Um, I'm just going to click on his website here and say, um, see what that price point is. I'm just kind of curious. Okay. $215. That is a, that is a $215 very well spent, I would say, um, to, to get your life back. Um, another person I would recommend for classroom management advice, and that is Anna Nichols. She was on the podcast on episode number 29. She runs the blog, uh, managing the art classroom, which is a really great resource for all sorts of Um, procedures, classroom management stuff, as well as teaching uh, materials too, but she really excels at classroom management. She also does coaching for art teachers. And because she is an art teacher, she's worked with a variety of different um, ages of students. She's really good at um, helping you come up with a classroom management plan and then has some good uh, procedures on her website. I know I used a lot of a lot of materials from her website when I was going into the classroom. She also very much supports Michael Linson as well. So those are some two two resources. If you really want to dive deep on -on one-on-one help, I really recommend you check out those two podcast episodes as well as um, both those two blogs, Managing the Art Classroom and smartclassroommanagement.com. So it's really um, one of those things that teacher teaching can feel very, very isolating, especially as the art teacher, when often you're the only one in your school who has the role that you have. And reaching out and getting support is just about the best thing you can do. I've, I've learned that in my life, you know, running an online business, like I, I would be nothing if I didn't have the support of 
the people and my social support systems in my life. So figure out who those support systems are for you personally, p- teachers at your school or at your district or online that you can buddy up with, that you can talk to about these sort of things. You know, we, we, live, in a, we live in a global community now that you can find that support system that you want. You know, I do have a few tips on, you know, when people do come to me and say, um, you know, I'm having this crazy class, what do I do? Uh, I have a couple tips that I normally give. So I'm going to go ahead and give those and then, um, and you can see what, what you, what you make of it. So I always like to say that a good lesson, um, passionate, joyful art teaching with a really engaging lesson with really interesting artworks that you're choosing to study when, you know, you have the best content to teach of all the content. (laughs) I mean, we've got uh, amazing things to teach as art teachers. Um, if you, if you choose really awesome artworks, really engaging lessons, and then you are super passionate about it, you're going to, you're going to create, um, a little bit more buy-in from the students. Another thing too, is kindness about of all like uh, above all because a lot of times when you have a bad class it can be hard to stay in control and kind to the students when you're so frustrated a student that knows that you care about them a student that knows that you see them as a person and not as this sort of rowdy class that's all together um, is going to be more likely to want to be good for you. So form, forming those relationships one-on-one with your students is really important. And, and let them know that you, that you see them. You know, smile at them when you see them in the hallway. Joke around with them if that's your personality. Like have a good time with them. But also you still want to remain firm um, with your rules and your procedures. So they know that you're kind and caring, but that you're also there to teach and you're also there to run your the room. So it's really important that you sort of strike that balance and this really hard balance to strike. And that balance has to be different a little bit with every single class because each class is so different. Um, I always start the year being much more strict in, in terms of you know, where they sit, um, what music I play, you know, all the, you know, how we get our supplies. And then I then will give privileges based on, you know, how I'm seeing them do that. So start the year with really strong procedures in place. You know, the, the classic for this is Harry Wong's first days of school that, you know, and remember that what you're getting onto them for, if, if they're, you know, particularly rough class, like make sure you're, 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 these aren't things that can be fixed through procedures. So like if they're constantly getting up out of their seats, like figure out like, why are they doing that? Maybe they need (laughs) more pencils on the table. You know, maybe it's just something like easy to fix, something that you can teach them like, okay, we only have this many people get up at a time because blah, blah, blah. And you know, it's all about, creating procedures that work for you and your classroom. And, and it's so different for each person because I am more of a sort of control, controlling <laughs> teacher of my environment. I've talked about that before on the podcast is I have, you know, I'm very highly sensitive. So a lot of movement and a lot of sound is really hard for me. So I don't often go to places where there's people running around chaotically or where there's a lot of noise because it really does impact my, my, um, anxiety levels and different things. So like it, it, all of this stuff is really personal to you. And I want you to feel the freedom to create this, this environment that works for your personality. So if you have a more controlling personality or you are sensitive to, to movement and sound, like you get, you get to choose, um, how much you allow in your classroom. Um, I'm kind of all over the place here, but you know, those, those routines and procedures are super important. So, Creating rules and routines and procedures, um, getting support, and being kind and creating great lessons. Those are my tips. And then my last tip, well, I have two more tips. My uh, My next one is to not 
go into a place of power struggles. The minute that you get into a power struggle, like that is a hard thing to get out of. It's a really hard thing to get out of. So say you have a, a student who, you know, you give a rule and then they, and you tell them, you know, please sit down or whatever. And they immediately come back at you with, um, no, you, you know, she's up or I was doing this or that. And, and then you banter back and forth and it becomes this annoying battle of wills that like realize that in that situation, you are the teacher and that you have the ultimate say. So do not engage in those power struggles at all costs, because that really does, um, it, one, it teaches the students what pushes your buttons. Um, and then it is just not great for your relationship. So, you know, to get out of a powder, a power, ugh, a power struggle with a student is to just not engage. And I used to do a little bit of reading on love and logic. Um, I don't really fully know the whole program, so I can't say I support it or don't support it. But what I do like about love and logic is that, you know, when those power struggles are being attempted at a student, love and logic is a really good way to shut it down. <laughs> and so it's like your student comes back at you and says um, something back and then you just say, I'm, so, I'm sorry, please have take a seat. And then they come back at you and say something else, this and that. And I'm saying, oh, I'm so sorry, please take a seat. And you just keep repeating yourself and eventually they'll just be like, ah, and they'll go sit down, you know? So it's, imp I think it's really important to not engage in that and that um, look for places to alleviate that. Um, sometimes, you know, giving the students a choice instead of just telling them one thing to do, uh, like you get to choose this or that, like that's going to then take the burden off of you telling them to do something and then allows them a little bit of choice. And it can be really simple choices, but that can make the students feel like they're a little bit more in control over their situation, which um, could diffuse that, diffuse that situation a little bit more. So uh, do not engage in power struggles. And then my last tip really is just to experiment. So you've tried the procedures and rules, still not working. You're trying all the things. Um, you want to experiment, but you also want to try to remain consistent for your students. So if one day you're deciding, okay, we're just going to go all in with freedom. You're going to do whatever you want and you're going to try that and see how it goes. And then that didn't work in one day. So the next day you're doing something completely different. The next day you're doing something completely different. That's going to cause you some trouble because they're going to they're just not going to know what to expect. So you want to remain consistent. You want to remain consistent in your mood and how, you know, you don't want to get angry. And then you also, you know, you want to still try new things. So one of the things I used to try that I, that weren't really well, and I think I actually found this on Anna Nichols blog somewhere. And if I find it, I will um, put a link to it, but she did something called a behavior quiz. And or maybe I found it on Incredible Art Department. I cannot remember. I'm going to Google it and see if I see if it pulls up. So essentially, you have the situation where half the class is not going well. And then half the class is being fine. And then in those situations, it's really hard to figure out who is who is the instigator, who is really having bad behavior, and who is just... Um, stuck in this situation just like you. And, and that's when the behavior quiz comes up. Oh, I found it. It's on the incredible art department. And so on that behavior quiz, there are like 20 questions or 20 um, statements. So like I raise my hand to speak in a group. I listen politely to others. I gather what I need to get busy. And then it says rarely or never, sometimes, most of the time and always. I have to tell you that went really, really well for me in my, I, I, I keep thinking this one class is 7B. <laughs> it went really well for 7B because, you know, I had a lot of good students in that class, but there were a bunch of people who were acting up too. So it was really hard to see who was instigating it and then who, what they thought about them, their own behavior. So they had to take this sort of self-assessment 
And then I could look at it and I can see like, do they know they're doing this? And then this also reinforces your, um, your routines and expectations. So I didn't use the one on Incredible Art Department. I changed it to fit my procedures, but it was a really good way to kind of stop and sort of self-assess. And it was a really good way to for the students to assess their own behavior in a really sort of non-threatening way because they could say, yes, I always uh, wait out. I always go straight to my desk and get ready. You know, like they could say that and then they could see which areas that they don't. Um, so I really liked that. I recommend you try that out if you're having if you're having any issues. But um, those really are my main tips for classroom management. Again, I am not an expert in classroom management. I um, when I first started, it was not cute. Like I did not do well with it. It was really really hard for me because um, I just that first year was was pretty pretty rough. <laughs> and then it got better. And then I, you know depending on the which groups, you know, it got better quickly or it got better slowly, but I do know your struggle and that it is hard and it, and it, and it's rough. So here are my, I'm just going to summarize sort of my main, main tips here. One, that every class is different and to experiment, you know, try new things, figure out what works for those students because what works for one student is not going to work for another student. So really look at your situation. Um, my second tip is to get support. Find someone who can help you, um, whether it be getting a, a coach like Anna Nichols or Michael Linson, or whether it is just someone in your district that, you know, we're taught in this world to like do things on our own and to be independent. But you know what? That's not the way to live. We need support. We need people to lean into. And even if it's just someone to vent to, that's really important. My third tip is to protect your energy at all costs. Don't engage in power struggles. Don't engage in arguments. And don't take anything that the students are doing person. Whatever they're doing, don't take it personally because it's not about you. Um, again, we'll talk about that again in a self-care episode. And then, um, you know, of course, routines and procedures, read Harry Wong's first days of school, that sort of stuff. And lastly, remember just to have fun, create engaging and exciting lessons, um, show artwork that is exciting, do fun things, and above, above all else, have a really positive attitude going in, even when it's hard, and knowing that it's fixable that you can do it, you'll make it through the day, everything will be fine. And then I think that was all the things. Yep, those are all my those are all my tips. So there we go. Um, good luck. I hope it's going well. How do you manage your classroom? I want to hear about it. Leave a comment uh, under this episode on artclasscurator.com slash 31. Let's hear your mate. What are your, some of your favorite tips? And let's start the conversation there. So thank you so much. Uh, have a wonderful day. And I look forward to hearing from you about your classroom management tips. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to the Art Class Curator podcast. Help more art teachers find us by reviewing the podcast and recommending it to a friend. Get more inspiration for teaching art with purpose by subscribing to our newsletter, Your Weekly Art Break. Recent topics include the importance of seeing art in person, famous and should be famous women artists, and 21 days of art from around the world. Subscribe at artclasscurator.com slash art break to receive six free art appreciation worksheets. Today's art quote is from Maya Angelou, and she says, you can't use up creati creativity. The more you use, the more you have. Thanks so much for listening. Have a wonderful week.